And it's in Lynchburg, Virginia. And it's New Mexico State at 10 and 3. And number 24, Liberty, perfect on the season. New Mexico State arrives at 10 and 3. They've won eight in a row. Their last conference title, 1978. Hi, everybody. I'm Rich Waltz. Welcome to the Conference USA Championship game. Two Missouri and Utah State. First and 10. Inside the 25. And keep it on the ground. Plate. No, it's the quarterback. It's Pavia. And he scores. Pavia sneaks through. 25 yards. What an impressive start for the Aggies. This game started out just like the one in September did when New Mexico State started with the ball and scored on their first drive. It was the backfield motion of the fly motion that froze the defense. The bad eyes end up causing bad plays and New Mexico State takes advantage of it. Gets a touchdown there early through the heart of that defense. Point is up and good. Eight plays, 75 yards, almost five minutes off the clock. Diego Pavia. The Albuquerque native for New Mexico State. And it's seven nothing in this Conference USA champ. Explosive receiver. Yeah, he's extremely explosive. Seventh in the FBS in yards per catch with 20.8. It's incredible. Only played about four games last year after leading the team back in 2021 with four touchdowns. Salter on the money. And a catch there. And that's CJ Daniels. They like to find him. He was a huge factor in the first game that they played. But keep your eye tonight on number 16, Gabe Peterson. Coming off a huge game against Jacksonville State, had a sack and tied for the lead in the team with nine tackles. I think this is the matchup of the night. New Mexico State's defensive line against a very talented Liberty unit up front. They'll run some triple option. They'll throw the quick game in like they're doing here. Trayon Sibley with the catch. And that's a first down. Sibley had missed three games prior to last week with injuries. Struggles to bring that football down, but somehow is able to corral it and move the chains. And you mentioned that tempo, Rich. Liberty tries to keep defenses off balance by varying the speed of their operation. Incredibly hard offense to prepare for. Quinton Cooley and his first touch to the 44-yard line. They run the ball, and they run it better than anybody in the country. 295 yards per game. In their last two games, they ran for a combined 765 yards. It's pretty remarkable what they've done, and in fact, they're going to be the first non-military academy to lead the country in rushing since 2019 when Georgia Tech did it. And on second down, Cooley again to midfield. He's got the first down. Watching Liberty, both their receivers, their tight ends, their offensive line, they're finishing their blocks, Rich. When you're an offensive lineman, there's kind of three phases. The contact power is phase one. The sustain is the middle part. That's phase two. But the coveted part is that phase three, and that's the finish. And Liberty looks like they're trying to do that here tonight. And that's why Cooley has got over 1,200 yards. Play action and a shot, a diving catch there. Daniels, outstanding. And Liberty is on the move. It was raining before the game. We saw the weather report, but this is what they do so well in that RPO game. The offensive line's firing off the football. It sucks the linebackers up and creates that window. The ball wasn't on target, but Daniels made Salter right. They have a deep game. They have a short game. They have the RPO. Salter, lots of time, fires. That's bed good with the catch. And up the sideline he goes out of bounds at the 21 yard line another first down New Mexico State doesn't blitz very often in here the offensive line just does a great job look at that protection up front Salter's back there eating sandwiches and cheesy grits and finally finds Bedgood out on the outside edge for an easy completion and first down Run. Cooley, this time he's in. Touchdown, and Liberty 
with an extra point. We'll tie it up. There is a flag. Again, this is the second time this year these two teams have met on this field. Liberty beat New Mexico State in week two. Yeah, neither team in that game. There is no foul for 12 players on the defense. Touchdown. In that game, red zone wasn't very good for either offense, both only going 50% for touchdowns. Liberty's pretty dang good. Second in the Conference USA at 75% touchdowns when they get inside the 20 and this is a great start for this offense that wants to do more of this all evening something to remember tonight New Mexico State has blocked two kicks and they almost got that one and it sneaks around the upright and it is good great start conference USA championship game two possessions two long touchdown drives 7-7 Thomas in motion. Pavia looks his way, then goes deep for Brady, and it's defended well and incomplete. Preston Hodge on the coverage. Man, he was in his hip pocket. Hodge is saying, not on my watch, man. Good protection up front, a little bit of pressure in his face, but Hodge is playing that ball almost like an offensive receiver right there, trying to go up and make a play and get an interception. Couldn't come down with it. But now, this is a situation third long that Liberty covets. Pavia pumps, scrambles, flicks, caught there. Hudson up the sideline. And a big play created by Pavia on the run. That was such good patience by Pavia. I thought he made a mistake. I thought if he was going to run, he should have took off right there. But he doesn't. I was like, no, no, no. But he had the patience. And Trent Hudson, who leads this team in touchdowns, made him right. That's his backyard football right there. And that's exactly what Liberty was afraid of. Skyler McGee told us, look, this dude outside, when he's on the move, he's a much more dangerous thrower. That's that confidence and belief, man. Go back to that Auburn game. That wasn't the fluke. Thomas. And he's down to the 13. That's a gain of about four. Verizon red zone. The touchdown average nationally when you get in the red zone is 62%. And New Mexico State is at 56%. Tim Beck, long time. Uh, Co-coach with Jerry Kill was coached with him in a variety of places. They were both at TCU, kind of as uh, analysts. And Jerry Kill actually took over as the interim coach back in 2021. And they arrived here last year of like mind that they could turn around and do the impossible, and they've done it. Thomas trying the right side. Rich, you mentioned that success, and part of that is New Mexico State's ability to milk the clock. Look at that. That's probably going to be the last play of the first quarter, but Tim Beck told us we want to run the ball to shorten the game to help the defense. Yeah, look, I mean, this is the turnaround. And, and look, this doesn't even illustrate how, how bad they have been. I mean, they won 10 games this year. The last time they did that was 1960. We're going to have to make a decision. Watch that play clock. Do they want to get a playoff before the quarter change or talk? And kick lands at midfield and it rolls inside the 45. So after the defensive stop, it's a three and out. That's a 58 yard punt. And nice job by the special teams. And Zach Haynes, the punter. Liberty gets the ball again. The head or neck area would be a foul. Salter looking, firing, downfield, caught there. Daniels out of bounds at the 13-yard line. 
Well, the Aggies receivers haven't been able to get any separation, but that certain wasn't the case with C.J. Daniels off of the regular play action. Beautiful time in the pocket and just lays up a pillow of a catch with a beautiful football along the sidelines. Completely turns around the safety there for a huge game back in the red zone. And a great illustration of the variety of this offense. They run that triple, and then they run a drop back, gorgeous throw like that. And Salter trying to find his way to a hole. And he gets to about the seven. Let's check in with Amanda Garrett. Well, Rich, talking about Liberty quarterback Aiden Salter, coaches say he's done a 180 since last season. And a big reason, he needed a faith from his new coaches. Last season, Liberty rotated coaches a lot. Heading into this season, Jamie Chadwell says Salter was constantly looking over his shoulder. He was worried about making a mistake and getting benched. Well, Chadwell told him, look, you are our guy. If you make a mistake, we're going to make it together and fix it. Since then, he's been a different quarterback. Yeah, he's been an incredible quarterback for sure. This is Cooley and Cooley on his feet busts into the end zone. Touchdown Liberty. The flames are lighting them up Rich. Quentin Cooley he's got such a low center of gravity just running through arm tackles that was a problem the first time they played him and it was a problem there beautiful response by Liberty to give themselves a chance to tie this up they are at times impossible to defend Salter with a big throw to Daniels and then Cooley who embraces his conference. And they're getting their butts blocked. Liberty is owning them up front. Third and 13. Salter caught there. That's Frith. He escapes inside the 10. Inside the end zone. Oh, wait a minute. Ball's loose. New Mexico State says they have it. The officials have not made a call. There's been no whistle. He looked like he was in the end zone. New Mexico State raced away. The officials looked at each other and did nothing. Well, the officials often will let the play play itself out so that they can go back and review it because there was an immediate recovery of that fumble. So they're going to let the play play out so that they can go back and watch it. To me, it looked like the ball broke the plane and didn't come out until after it had crossed. So loud, he can't even make the announcement. The ruling on the field is the ball carrier had possession of the ball, broke the plane of the goal line, touchdown. And again, it was a dreaded missed tackle, and Frith with those long arms. Gets that ball out. Boom. It's a touchdown right there. And man, that's about as close as you can absolutely get. But this call is right. Now I'm saying break the plane. It's the front of that white line. And that ball certainly did that to put this ball in the end zone or catch it and get out of bounds immediately. Eight seconds to work with. Pavia fires. End zone caught. That's Hudson. And that's a touchdown. Wow! This is unbelievable, man. Both of these teams are fighting so hard. New Mexico State struggled all evening in these first 30 minutes, Rich, to get any sort of separation. They go to the back shoulder fade game on that drive multiple times and get a touchdown to possibly score this thing up right before halftime. They had 25 seconds to work with. Time on that drive, 22 seconds. It was the kickoff that they were just trying to dribble down the field so that there was no chance of a return because of the healthy respect that they had that gave them great field position. And Pavia puts the ball right where Trent Hudson can go and get it. 
And he's the team leader in receiving touchdowns for a reason. Plays this ball perfectly. Yes, he pushed off there, but that's the game out there on the edge, and New Mexico State did it beautifully. This is what you want in a championship game, Rich. It's a heavyweight fight. Liberty, the way that they've responded, the way their defense has been playing, but that's who these teams are. Nobody gives these teams a chance. New Mexico State, who wants that job?